So normally in a linear algebra class, you find the eigenvalues of a matrix by using the determinant. But the determinant is this like kind of strange, unwieldy object. And so maybe there's a better way, a way to investigate eigenvalues and eigenvectors without using the determinant. And in fact, there is. And I think this method is popularized in a book called Linear Algebra Done Right by Sheldon Axler, if you'd like to check that out. But it appears in a lot of places. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, actually, before we get started, let's recall that normally in linear algebra class, you would immediately learn after the definition of an eigenvalue that lambda is an eigenvalue of a if and only if the determinant of a minus lambda times the identity is zero. And like I said, that uses the determinant, which we're trying to get away from in this video. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, let's do some setup. So let's say that A is some n by n matrix. Okay, well, that means we're gonna be working with vectors that are n-dimensional if we wanna find eigenvector eigenvalue combinations. Okay, so we've got an n by n matrix here and we're gonna take V to be an n-dimensional complex matrix. And well, we'll mention why we need to work over the complex numbers or why it's nice to work over the complex numbers. And I'm going to say that this is any vector. Okay, so now perhaps there's kind of a best choice of this vector or some condition that makes the best choice for this kind of vector. And we'll point that out as we move forward. Okay, so anyway, we've got an n by n matrix and we've got an n dimensional vector. And now we, what we want to do is consider the following set of vectors in Cn. So the first member of that set will be V. The second set will be A times V, or the second vector will be A times V. The next one, A squared times V, all the way up to A to the n power times V. Okay, great. So we've got n different vectors there. And before we get too far, I'd like to point out that implicitly, I'm assuming that V is non-zero, but let's make that explicit. So we've got a non-zero vector V. And now the important observation to make here is that we've got N plus one vectors here, but the dimension of CN is N. But anytime you have more vectors than your dimension allows for, you know that this set is linearly dependent. So let's write that down. So we know that this is linearly dependent. Okay. But now what I want to do is not quite work with this set. I want to work with a subset of this which is linearly dependent. But I need to really show that, or I needed to do this first step, which was argue that I could get a linearly dependent set in the first place by this dimension argument. Okay, so now how I'm gonna do that. So let's take a number m to be the minimum such that we have v, a v, a squared v all the way up to a to the m times v is linearly dependent. So perhaps that m is equal to n. That's, of course, the maximum value that m could be. Notice that m is not 0 because we don't have the 0 vector here. m could be 1. And in which case m would be 1, we would just have these two vectors down here, which means we chose an eigenvector for our matrix. But, you know, if we didn't choose an eigenvector, we can still extend this out to find a linearly dependent set. Okay, but anytime you have a linearly dependent set, you have a so-called linear dependence relation. So let's get that into existence. So that means there exist numbers, I'll call them a0, a1, up to a sub n, and those are lowercase. And of course, they're complex numbers because we're working over a complex um, vector space, such that we have a0 times v plus a1 times a times v, all the way up to a sub m times a sub m times 
times a to the m times v is equal to zero. And I just realized my index here was wrong. That should be ending at m. Okay, nice. But now what I'd like to do is rewrite this a little bit. I'm going to rewrite this by factoring the um, vector v out of the right. And that's going to give me a sub m times a to the m plus a sub m minus 1 times a to the m minus 1 all the way down to a times a1. And then we have a0 times the identity matrix times v. This is equal to 0. So we've got something like that going on. But I'd like to observe that what we have here is really just a polynomial evaluated at our matrix. So polynomial evaluated at A. But we're working over the complex numbers, and so we can use the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says that any polynomial over the complex numbers factors into linear terms. So let's factor that into linear terms, and we'll write it like this. So we'll have a minus lambda 1 times i, a minus lambda 2 times i, all the way down a minus lambda m times i. And then that's going to be multiplied into v, and we'll get 0 there. That's just the factorization of our polynomial. Keep in mind that when we factor it as a polynomial with this matrix, anytime we would have just had a number in the normal factorization, we have to put the identity matrix. That's why we have that right there. Okay, nice. And now I want to make this claim. And that claim is that all of these numbers, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda m, are eigenvalues of A. Okay, cool. So we've got a bunch of eigenvalues of A. Now, do we have all of the eigenvalues? Well, perhaps not. And that's because if we had gotten super lucky and chosen this any vector right here to be already an eigenvector of A, then we would have only gotten the eigenvalue associated to that eigenvector. We would have missed all of the rest of them. Now, we could work through this a little bit by taking maybe the supremum or the maximum over all non-zero vectors in C of this number m right here. But let's not really worry about that. Uh, we'll just like take kind of as a fact that we can so-called massage this vector right here until, yes, we do get all of the eigenvalues of A. But notice I didn't prove that these are all eigenvalues. So let's go ahead and do that. So how can we do that? Well, I'm going to reorder this a little bit. So I'm going to reorder this as a minus lambda sub k times i, and then put all of the rest of the terms. Notice that this product, even though it's a product of matrices, kind of clearly commutes because all powers of a commute with all other powers of a, and the identity matrix commutes with everything. Okay, so now I'm going to have a minus lambda 1i multiplied up to a minus lambda sub k minus 1 times i, and then we'll have a minus lambda sub k plus 1 times i multiplied all the way up to a minus lambda m times i, and then all of this is multiplied into v, and that gives us 0. So the important thing here is I just took this a minus lambda k sub i and I brought it out in front of everything else. And now I want to argue, and I'll just argue this in words, that this vector right here is non-zero. Well, and why is that non-zero? Well, if it were zero, let's observe that we could multiply it out and we would have a degree m minus 1 polynomial evaluated at a and then multiplied into v, giving us 0, which would contradict this minimality of our m here, because we could essentially replace m with m minus 1. Okay, so anyway, that's non-zero. But let's maybe give this thing a name. So let's maybe name this v sub k, because it's associated to this thing right here. So now let's observe we have a minus lambda k times i times v sub k equals 0. 
based off of this construction we've done. But that immediately tells us that a times v sub k equals lambda k times v sub k. In other words, lambda k is an eigenvalue with eigenvector, which is made up of this object right here. Okay, great. So now while well, we've done this kind of in general, what I'd like to do is work through an example where we can actually calculate the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of a small matrix using this method. Now before we jump into our example, if you haven't liked the video, make sure and click the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing, it really helps us. Okay, so for our example, we'll take this matrix which is read row-wise as 0, 1, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 4, and negative 1, 2, 4, and the vector v will be 0, 1, 0. Okay, so now let's form our set of four vectors which will be guaranteed to be linearly dependent. So the first one is v, the second one is a times v, which of course is going to be our matrix a times the vector v. So just as a reminder, how do you do matrix vector multiplication? We're going to swivel this first row into our column vector. The things that overlap will multiply and then we'll add. So in the end, that'll give us a vector, which is 1, negative 2, 2. And then likewise, we can pretty easily calculate a squared v and a cubed v. So a squared v will be negative or 0, negative 2, 3. And then a cubed times v will be 1, negative 8, and 8. Okay. So like I said, in the general case, we're guaranteed for this to be linearly dependent. Furthermore, our guaranteed or our minimum m value, I should say, is 3. And you can check that because any subset here is not linearly dependent. Okay, nice. So now let's find our linear dependence relation. So we'll look at a0 times our vector v plus a1 times our matrix a times v, a2 times a squared times v, a3 times a cubed times v equals 0. But I'm going to do a bit of a trick here. And since we know 3 is the smallest number that creates a linearly dependent set, I can take the coefficient of a cubed to be 1. And that's because it's non-zero, because if it were 0, then 3 would not be minimum. Okay, so now let's rewrite that with our calculations over here. So that's going to be a0 times this vector right here, 0, 1, 0, and then a1 times the vector 1, negative 2, 2, and then a2 times the vector 0, negative 2, 3, and then 1 times the vector 1, negative 8, 8 equals the 0 vector. And now I'll just extract the first component, second component, and third component for each of these vectors. So let's see, that'll give me the equation a1 plus 1 is equal to 0. That's from the first component. And then for the second component, I'll have a0 minus 2a1 minus 2a2 minus 8 equals 0. And then finally for the third component, I'll have 2a1 plus 3a2 plus 8 equals 0. But luckily, this first equation is so simple that we can just write down the value of a1, which is pretty clearly equal to negative 1. And now let's loop that into the third equation and see what we get. So when all is said and done, we'll have 2, or sorry, 3a2 is equal to negative 6 which means a2 is equal to negative 2. And then we can loop both of these into the second equation. And what we'll see is in the end, a0 will be equal to 1. Okay, cool. So we've got the value of all of our coefficients. So now, what does that tell us? Well, that means that we can rewrite this equation as a cubed times v, I'm going to change the order here, minus 2a squared times v, 
and then minus a times v plus 2v equals 0. I just realized this a0 should have been 2. Okay, nice. But now I can factor a v out of the right-hand side, and I'll have a cubed plus 2a squared minus a plus 2 times the identity matrix is equal to 0. Oh, and then that's all times our vector v. Now what we'll do is factor that polynomial. So it's a cubic polynomial, but you could perhaps use the rational root theorem to factor it. And this will factor as a plus i times a minus i times a minus 2i times v equals 0. Okay, so now let's bring that up and we'll finish it. Before we finish off the example, I'd like to talk to you about my second channel, Math Major, which has full courses in upper division math classes. And in fact, it is kept ad free thanks to the support of channel members and Patreons. So if you're interested in helping me keep this second channel ad free, think about joining the Patreon or becoming a channel member. Okay, so anyway, let's see where we left off. We had this product a plus identity times a minus the identity matrix uh, times a minus 2i times the vector v is equal to 0. And using what we saw in our general setup, we can essentially just write down the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So let's start off with our eigenvalue of lambda equals 1. And we know our eigenvector from our previous construction will be a plus i times a minus 2 times i times our vector v. It's essentially the whole product up there except for the a minus i part, the part associated with the eigenvector we're working on or eigenvalue we're working on. So let's write this one out and then I'll just leave the rest of them as calculations on your own. So this is going to be the matrix 1, 1, 1. And then we'll have 2, negative 1, negative 4. And then we'll have negative 1, 2, 5. So that's our a plus the identity. And then here we'll have negative 2, 1, 1. And then we'll have 2, and then negative 4, negative 4. And then lastly, we'll have negative 1, 2, 0. Or sorry, 2, 2. So that's going to be a minus twice the identity. And now we need to multiply in this to the vector 0, 1, 0. Multiplying this all out will give us the vector minus 1, minus 1, 2. Okay, now we could take that as our eigenvalue or eigenvector, or we could scale it if we like to. Personally, I would scale this so we have two positive entries and one negative entry, although it doesn't really matter. So I would take 1, 1, negative 2. Okay, so now let's move on to our next eigenvalue, which is negative 1, which means our eigenvector is a minus i times a minus 2 times i times our vector v. I'll let you do the calculation of that, and what you end up with is negative 3, 6, negative 3. And in this case, the motivation to scale is a little bit higher, and that's because everything is divisible by 3, so we might as well scale this and take our eigenvector to be 1, negative 2, 1. And then finally, we could find our last eigenvector, which is lambda equals 2, and the eigen uh, sorry, eigenvalue, which is lambda equals 2, and the eigenvector will be a minus i times a plus i times our vector v. And if you calculate that out, you'll see that you get 0, negative 3, 3. But again, you can scale that, and in this case, I would scale it to give me the vector 0, 1, negative 1. Okay, so there we have it. We've gotten a complete system of eigenvalues and eigenvectors without using the determinant. And that's a good place to stop.